Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Capitalism, whether praised or derided, is an economic system and ideology based on private ownership of the means of production and operation for profit. Classical economics recognizes capitalism as the most effective means by which an economy can thrive. Certainly, in 1776, Adam Smith made one of the best cases for capitalism in his book, An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations, known more commonly as the Wealth of Nations. But the term capitalism actually was first used to deride the ideology by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels in the Communist Manifesto in 1848. Of course, whether Mr. Marx was correct in his criticisms or not, he lived in an age when capitalism and a free market were essentially one and the same. Today, this is not the case. The capitalist system has been under attack for roughly 100 years, particularly in North America and the EU. A tenet of capitalism is that, if it's left alone, it will sort itself out and will serve virtually everyone well. Conversely, every effort to make the free market less free diminishes the very existence of capitalism, making it less able to function. Today, we're continually reminded that we live under a capitalist system and that it hasn't worked. The middle class is disappearing, and the cost of goods has become too high to be affordable. There are far more losers than winners, and the greed of big business is destroying the economy. This is what we repeatedly hear from left-leaning people and, in fact, they are correct. They then go on to label these troubles as byproducts of capitalism and use this assumption to argue that capitalism should give way to socialism. In this, however, they are decidedly wrong. These are the byproducts of an increasing level of collectivism and fascism in the economy. In actual fact, few, if any, of these people have ever lived in a capitalist or free market society, as it has been legislated out of existence in the former free world over the last century. So, let's have a look at those primary sore spots that are raised by suggesting that collectivism will correct the evils of capitalism. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Prices are driven from the top down. This is unquestionably the case in the aforementioned countries, however, it is not so under capitalism. Under capitalism, each producer tries to get as much as he can for his product, but, as others are also creating the same product, those with the lowest price are the ones who will succeed. Therefore, the consumers effectively set the prices, based upon what they're willing to pay. But in any country where cronyism exists between big business and government, regulations can squeeze out the competition, allowing a monopoly for a given product, the definition of this marriage between business and government is fascism. The government makes it increasingly difficult through regulation for the small producer to compete with a larger producer who gives kickbacks to the government. Capitalism only benefits those at the top. Capitalism benefits those who produce the most, but it also benefits all others, as they have a free choice to purchase whatever products they wish, at a price they're prepared to pay. If the producer demands too high a price, consumers instead buy his competitor's product, putting him out of business. The consumer is therefore in charge of the price of goods. The producer only rises to the top if he produces the most affordable product, as did Henry Ford, 100 years ago, with his Model T. Through the free market, he lowered his price repeatedly, and, in so doing, put America on wheels. Capitalism impoverishes the masses. 
The free market offers more goods to more people at lower prices, which enriches the lives of all consumers, no matter how rich or poor. In so doing, it raises up the masses over time, providing them with more and better goods, education, healthcare, etc., enabling them to rise out of poverty. By contrast, overregulation and entitlements enslave those same people to poverty. The whole idea of the free market is that it's free from interference by others, most importantly, governments. If left alone, the free market will produce the goods the public are most willing to pay for, which results in an ever self-leveling of products and prices. As soon as regulation enters the picture, the free market is compromised. What exists today is not a free market, as Adam Smith would have recognized it, but a bloated dysfunctional socialist fascist capitalist mongrel of a system. Of course it doesn't work. In the words of Vladimir Lenin, fascism is capitalism in decay. Absolutely. Regulation is a cancer that slowly gnaws at capitalism until it transforms into fascism. As articulated by Socrates to Adamantus around 400 BC in Athens, their leaders deprived the rich of their estates and distributed them among the people, while ensuring to preserve the larger part for themselves. What was true in ancient Athens circa 400 BC holds true today. Fascism, or corporatist cronyism, results in 99% of the population, falling under the dictate of the 1%, composed of government and corporate leaders working in concert, excluding all others. This, in fact, goes against the principles of a free market. In the words of Doug Casey, the creation of new wealth is the only functional weapon against poverty. New wealth comes from the bottom up. It's as simple as someone building a better mousetrap, or building the old one more cheaply. In such a market, both the producer and the consumer benefit. In a fascist system, the wealth gravitates to the top, eventually choking out the middle class and expanding the poorer class, and that's just what we're witnessing today. The solution is, not to go further in this direction, but rather to try something new, or at least new to anyone living under the fascist system. Although it still retains some capitalist overtones, it is unquestionably not capitalism. A last word, capitalism does exist today, but it lives in select countries that have not yet given in to overregulation. In those countries, the average person thrives and has opportunities far beyond what's allowed in the former free world. If you conclude that your present country is unlikely to move towards capitalism, you may consider voting with your feet to seek prosperity, much like your ancestors did a century ago. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.